up on some videos that I did previously. Over the summer, Sasha and I bought a cargo trailer, which I'm actually in right now. And given our time constraints, I actually put together our hitch extension set up with the parts that I already had available. We towed that from New Hampshire to New York to Ohio to Wisconsin, up to Northern Michigan, and then all the way back down to Arizona where we are right now. Now I have another leg of our journey coming up, which is about a thousand miles and we're headed to Texas again. So in the previous videos that I did, which I will leave links to down in the description, one of our biggest issues with the truck is whenever we go over one of the really nasty bridge joints, the suspension will decompress and then recompress and it causes the hitch extension to flex a lot more than I'm comfortable with. Now in the first video that I did, I didn't have the weight distribution system tight enough. I was experimenting with how much tension was enough tension. In that footage, which I'm gonna show right now, you can see a great deal of flex and that flex is translated right into the hitch and the factory hitch was torquing way too much. Never broke, but doing that for thousands of miles is eventually gonna to lead to a problem. After the video was published, I did do some more recording of how the hitch extension behaved once I got the Anderson weight distribution hitch tightened to its proper specification. I decided that I wanted to call Anderson's tech support to get some answers about how to adjust the hitch further. And I have to say my experience with them was really good. I called the number on the website, dialed two for support and waited about 30 seconds and someone picked up and answered all my questions. I told them how I had adjusted it at two turns and three turns and four turns. And of course, four turns is what they recommend. And tighten it four revolutions on both sides. But could I go to five turns or six turns? He said that the goal is to compress the rubber bushing about a quarter inch. So it comes from the factory at two inches and you can compress it down to an inch and three quarters and that's kind of the standard preload. I told them that I was towing with an extension and I'd like to get a little bit more weight distribution to take the stress off of the factory hitch. He said that you can compress the rubber bushing until it's the same diameter as the washer. He said I can definitely go five turns, that should be no problem. I'll be really curious to see if adjusting it a little bit tighter makes the stress on that factory hitch much less. So I'll have to update you in another video in the future. That more or less solved the issue, kind of. So my current hitch extension setup certainly works. Uh, I get about 3,000, maybe 3,500 miles on it. It is working, but I just don't feel comfortable driving with it. Now that I've recorded the footage, I can see how, I guess, flimsy it is. The real issue is that you're putting so much leverage on your factory hitch. I have a 20,000 pound hitch and that's great, but when you put a 34 inch extension on it and then take 400 pounds and twist it up and down, the amount of force going back to that hitch is astronomical. Before I did all of that, I really had my eyes set on the torque lift super hitch, but I didn't have time to get it and we were ready to hit the road. So I figured I would get on the road, get to where we need to be, which is Arizona right now. Then I would have the time to upgrade to a torque lift super hitch. I really couldn't find a robust, strong, well-reviewed hitch extension system from any other manufacturer. That led me to contacting torque lift and asking them if they would send me out their torque lift super hitch and their super truss extension. So just to be transparent, torque lift did send me their super hitch and their super truss out for free in exchange for me making some videos about the system. But to be totally honest, there's nothing else on the market that I would even consider buying. So I would have ended up buying this anyway, even if they didn't send it to me. Now, Torque Lift hasn't paid me to do this. They just sent me out their product. And I'm definitely gonna be putting it through its paces because I wanna see, is it really worth the extra expense to go from what I currently have to what they offer. In all of my research, I couldn't find any good footage online of how the hitch extension behaves while under load on the highway going over those crazy bridge joints. So considering I've already amassed a bunch of footage of the previous hitch extension setup, it shows just how much flex there is and how much sway and bounce there is. My plan for this video is to get this installed and do the exact same thing during our next trip down to Texas. <laughs> guys so I'm not recording a whole lot of this because we're actually running late we're gonna get this hooked up I just dropped it onto the ball and I haven't set this up in a while so we're gonna get on the road and then I'll record how the, the behavior 
works. If you guys are interested in how I hook this up, it's in one of the other videos that I'll link down in the description. And why does this not fit? There we go. Almost perfect. So if you guys have an Anderson hitch, people found that when you back up at a slightly different angle, it doesn't uh, align. So I found if I take the back side of this, put it in the hole, and just, just tap it a little bit, then the hole lines up. Like that. All right, so we'll get on the road, we'll finish packing up, and then uh, the next thing will be probably some camera action of how this thing handles the weight. I think we're in Tonto National Forest. Ah, uh, okay. But I'm not sure is the exact Co location. Coconino or Ton Tonto? That's, yeah. I, I think Coconino is the different one, but we just entered Tonto. So we basically chose a Walmart that's south of uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's about a 350 mile trip. So we went from 3,000 feet to 7,500 feet, and now we're heading back down. It's twisty, tight. I just put that all together, and normally I like to go off and experiment and test everything, but I double checked everything and so far everything seems more solid. I don't know how to explain it. Sasha feels the same way. It just has this like more solid, tighter feel than the old hitch setup did. And I haven't mounted the GoPro yet. I've been able to watch it through, let me show you our, through right here. I'm able to keep an eye on it. Now, we haven't really hit any major bumps. The, the only time we really got concerned with the old hitch was on those bridge joints and the like the, the, the undulations, the whoop-de-doos on the highway that makes the whole rig go up and down. We haven't had that issue yet, but we're gonna stop for lunch in a little while. I'll find my GoPro, I'll get it set up, and then hopefully, hopefully we have some decent bumps so that we can get an idea of of the, the movement in the hitch. So far, so good. I'm I'm feeling ten times more confident driving it. It feels the way it should. It doesn't feel like I'm towing with an extension. It feels like I'm towing with just a regular bumper pull trailer. So feels feels great. I love it. This is the, the setup all attached. We have enough space now from here that even if I needed to do almost a 90 degree turn, this would fit. Um, I'm not gonna do that, but before it was a little too tight and I had to actually keep the stairs off so it didn't bind against the uh, tongue jack. So you can see it's, it's quite, a, quite a distance here. And I just mounted my GoPro over there. It does wiggle a little bit because I don't have any like hitch tightener system up there. And it, it is, it's gonna wiggle up and down a little bit. But in terms of strength, even with this attached, if I jump on this before that used to flex, now it just makes the whole camper and truck move up and down. So it's a huge improvement. So anyways, working well, I'm happy with it. There's a lot of work to put on, but definitely worth it.
So we're in Texas. We just got to Texas yesterday and so far, no drama with uh, towing. It's actually been great. Everything feels to be more solid now and better, just better. I don't have that worry when we go over the big bumps, um, which unfortunately I haven't been able to record all of the big bumps because the, the GoPro is good for about an hour. Whatever I capture during the hour is what I have to work with. And then what I'll do is I'll come out, I'll swap the battery and I'll put it in a new location. So then I, when I make the video, I scrub through all of that footage looking for anything that's that's big because obviously if we're just driving flat nothing happens. What I'm looking for is to see how this hitch handles the really big bumps. I'm going to record this, I'm going to attach it again, we're going to eat our lunch and we're going to we're going to go for our final leg of the trip. Since I'm on this nice concrete spot, I'm going to climb under here and give a quick inspection, make sure that everything looks okay. So it looks like I had a little movement here. Um, this probably walked not really though. So I don't know what causes that, but it looks like it might have walked back a little bit. So someday in the future, I will disconnect this. I'll remove this sticker, uh, clean it up and put it back together. And I had one of these chains kind of loosen up, which I think is as it wears into its grooves, you know, you're going to get like a thousandth of an inch here, a thousandth of an inch here, a thousand, and it all adds up. So I just retightened it a little bit. Everything's been working absolutely perfectly. I will probably need to tighten that chain up a tiny bit, but it hasn't been touching, so I'm happy with that. One downside to this hitch is it's so much lower now to get underneath. So I used to be able to almost sit underneath this, but now I have to lay down and slide under. Since we're gonna be there in a couple hours, I'm not gonna bother torquing everything. But before I, I hook this all up again, I will retorque everything. Nothing seems to have moved. They don't actually tell you to retorque anything, uh, but it's something I like to double check. The sway bar is doing okay. Clearance up here is, is minimal, but it does clear. We're fully loaded. And these are the timberins there. Pretty squished. I'm gonna record another 37 minutes of footage. I'll see what I can see in it. The roads here are actually pretty smooth. A couple bridge joints, but I'm hoping to get a couple dramatic bounces so that we can see what it does and then, uh, and then I'll make the video. Okay, so I'm gonna do this a little differently. I'm sitting in front of my computer. I'm working on the edit right now and I kind of got to this part and realized that my big issue is that I don't have any footage that shows anything super dramatic happening. So this is the video as it sits right now. And then if I zoom out, this is all of the footage that I have. And we can watch it. It's pretty boring. It just sits there. It doesn't do anything. However, I noticed in a couple select clips, I scrubbed through all of that. I have about four hours of recorded footage. I was able to find the parts where I went over the bumps. You can see that there's some bouncing. I have a theory on this. Let me play this clip right here. So these two are the worst because you can see it from the angle. You have this bouncing, 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 bouncing. And then when you zoom in on this section, you have some play in the hitch. I didn't have a hitch tightener that would fit this setup. The hitch tightener that I was using on the old setup, the threads on it actually let go and I didn't have time to order one. I've seen most people run these without a hitch tightener, but of course now I'm realizing that with that amount of play in the hitch right here, it likes to bounce. What makes the bouncing even worse is the way I have my weight distribution set up. It's almost at equilibrium. The amount of lift that the weight distribution is providing makes it almost float, and you can see that in the way it behaves. Having the weight distribution kind of at equilibrium where everything is just floating along is gonna make the bounce much worse. What I probably need to do is add a hitch tightener here. I think because of how strong this setup is, I probably need to reduce the weight distribution slightly so that there's a little bit more tongue weight. So this is in no way a, a problem with the hitch. It's just that there's play and that this is bouncing because of the way I have the tension set up in the weight distribution hitch. This was literally the worst bridge transition that I could find in the three, four hours of footage that I recorded. So we'll watch this. And then this is a different camera angle. And you can see that there is a slight bit of hitch movement here. If you watch it compared to the back of the flatbed, you can watch this section flex a little bit. See, bang, bang, bang. I do think that the, the amount of wiggle I have in this extension 
is allowing this to move without putting that flex into the hitch. I'm also wondering if I add a hitch tightener, if it's going to force more of this bouncing into the hitch. So maybe it's actually good that this has some wiggle room. I really don't know, and I'll probably end up uh, emailing Torque Lift and asking them. So bottom of the bounce to the top of the bounce is, I'm gonna say four inches. And you can see where the flex is actually occurring is in these pins. A hitch tightener would tighten that up and remove that wiggle, but all of that motion and force might get transferred to the hitch, which would cause more flexing. It doesn't flex nearly as much as the old setup does. So for the vast majority of the trip, it was just pretty smooth. And then of course I had some of this, this wiggling and bouncing. I also wanted to talk about how this handles turning the trailer. You can see how this chain tightens up as it's moving this way. And then as I go the other way, it loosens up. And I believe it's because I'm coming downhill and the trailer's pushing against us. But uh, these chains do work quite well. It keeps this hitch from, from moving side to side. Do have to tighten them up occasionally. Again, it's brand new. The link spaces I think wear slightly over time. But once I get it all tightened up, it should be good, nice and stiff. I think in the future, if I simply reduce the tension on the weight distribution and add a hitch tightener, it'll stiffen that all up. Of course, that would have to wait for a future video. Right now we're set up at Dinosaur Valley RV Park in Glen Rose, Texas, and I don't have any plans on towing anytime soon, so it's probably gonna be a couple months before I get this rig set up again. I do have some future plans with the trailer, but that's gonna have to wait for a different video. I'm extremely happy with the Super Hitch and Super Truss. It's such a dramatic upgrade over my previous hitch extension setup. I feel like it's comparing a professional tool against a child's toy. However, my first setup certainly did the job. I just wouldn't trust it over the next, you know, 10 or 20,000 miles. The Torque Lift Super Hitch is certainly built to last, and I haven't come across any truck camper people that have complained about it failing or being a problem at all. Also, I wish there was something on the market that I could compare this to, but it really is in a class of its own. If you guys know of any other product that's similar, please let me know because I would love to check it out. That's all I have for you in this video. The footage wasn't quite as dramatic as I had hoped for. I will obviously make an update video in the future. If you found this video interesting or informative, please click that subscribe button down below. Also click the like button. It helps us and it helps our channel grow. If I missed anything in this video or if you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm also gonna leave all of the product links down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.